guys, so today's video, we're working on this Hellcat Swap Ram 1500. And this has the Dodge 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi in it. On the last video, we got everything ready for the E85 conversion. So we put bigger injectors in here. We've got 1300 CC injector dynamics injectors. We picked those up from Moe's Performance. So shout out to Matt from Moe's. For those, we've got dual 535 fuel pumps in here. So TI automotive fuel pumps, thanks to Holly. We've got those in there. And we also went with one step colder iridium spark plugs. So we've got all that stuff in there, but on the last video I was telling you guys we needed to load up a tune for the bigger injectors and also the bigger fuel pumps. So that's in there. Right now I have 93 octane in there with a mix of 104 octane from the last time we were at the track. So what we're gonna do is get this truck dialed in on that fuel and then once we get it dialed in on the 93 then we're going to switch over to e85 i'm going to have two tunes one for 93 one for e85 depending on what we're doing and that way if you ever run out you can load up the 93 tune all that good stuff so i'm going to go ahead and start it up right now on the tune this is our first startup with the 1300 cc injector tune we'll fire it up and then we got to do some data logging and kind of get things sorted out. We're not gonna be able to hammer on it just yet until we kind of you know do some data logging. But one thing I do want to tell you guys is on these fuel pumps, a few I saw some questions people were asking on the last video. So these fuel pumps are PWM controlled. So and what that means is essentially the fuel pumps are pulsated like a fuel injector. So they are firing on and off, you know thousands of times per second and there's no fuel pressure regulator on the setup so the way it works is it is just a straight garden hose to the fuel rail it's a returnless setup and it just sits there and pulsates the pumps to get the desired pressure at the rail and so this system can go anywhere from 45 or 50 psi and it can crank it all the way up to 90 psi on command so it's pretty cool it's got a variable fuel pressure on this with a ton of volume so we should be good for a while with those pumps let's go ahead and fire this up cycle the key on All right, so we've got our vehicle here. We've got our logging. We're gonna go ahead, start the vehicle. So I'm gonna go over here, click record. All right, so I've got that recording over there on the laptop. Go ahead and start it. And we'll go for a little rip. Okay guys, so pretty much the data logging process, as you can see, I'm not driving or doing anything too crazy. But um, you kind of ease into things. If you guys have ever done this process, if you have, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You pretty much, you go out and you take things in stages. You're not gonna go out and just mash the pedal, like as Clay would say, just hit the skinny pedal, step on the loud pedal. You're not gonna do that. You're gonna go around, first you're gonna get like an idling log, sometimes tuners will want. Then from there, they'll want you to, you know, do some just casual driving and whatnot, maybe a little bit of partial throttle. And what I mean by partial throttle is exactly that. You're only partially getting into that skinny pedal. And then after everything checks out, usually the tuner will say, okay, well, you know, just give me a one little wide open throttle hit. So that's uh, pretty much what we're doing now. Um, I didn't bore you guys with the regular stuff, but this is pretty much what I was doing before. I just kind of drove around like this and then uh, sent that data back, got the green light. So now we're gonna do one WOT hit. Um, nothing crazy, just like one gear shift pretty much and um, then send that information back. And um, everything looks good so far. The tuner said that we're pretty much just about good to switch to E. He just wanted to see how things are running on 93 first. And then now uh, we should be able to switch over here in a minute. So, so I'm going to go ahead and pretty much just let it do one gear shift. So let's see what she does. So 
there we go. We've got our one hit logged. So we're gonna take this, send it back to the tuner, and uh, I will update you guys once I get that back. All right, so I've been driving around for a while, but I thought I'd be able to go and burn down this tank, but I'm still, if you guys can see that, I'm still at a quarter tank. So I've got my jerry cans with me. I got three five gallon jugs, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up. But we got the 85 over here. So we're gonna go ahead and fill that up, and then I will test it as well, but I'm not gonna put it in the truck. I'm gonna continue to run this tank down. Okay, so we're back. I've got the 15 gallons in the back. And I picked up one of these things. So obviously you can see E85 tester ethanol testing kit. So it's pretty simple. Ooh. So it's pretty simple. All you do is fill it up to here with water. And then you fill it from there to there with your E85. Shake it, let it rest for, how long was it again? This is the first time I'm gonna use it. Wait for liquids to separate and read results. So it doesn't actually give you time, but Essentially, you just let it separate and then it's gonna tell us what our ethanol content is. So I'm gonna go ahead, fill it with water, put ethanol in there and then we'll see what happens. Okay, here we go with the water. So, let's dump this out to get it to the line. A little bit less. Okay, so I would say that's at the water fill line. And now for the fun part, we're trying to put E85 in this without spilling all over the place. Okay. So I'm gonna put the cap on, shake it around, and we'll see what happens. So you can see there, and then it's just this cloudy thing, and we have to leave it sit for a number of minutes until we see what our results are. All right, so this is only like a minute later, but hopefully you guys can see this. We're kind of getting this like weird cloudiness right there. That's forming right at the E85 line. So I'm guessing after we leave this for a while, we'll see a much more clear separation because it's still kind of doing this cloudiness fizzy thing, but at least she's doing something around E85, so should be good to go. Okay guys, so this is our result, if this focuses. So it looks like E80 is what we're coming up with. So it's a little shy of the E85, but I don't know. Could be the station. That's one of the things with E85 is you wanna like make sure that uh, you test it because otherwise you might not have the ethanol content that you're thinking, so. Anyways, my first time testing it, E80, uh, this tank is pretty much gonna be a wash anyways, just for the fact that there's still some 93 in the tank. So I'm going to, we'll put that in once I run this down a little bit more, and then I'm gonna go to a different station next time. My buddy Dennis actually filled up and his was like E95. So if I go over to his station, we'll do the same test and we will see what she ends up with. So we've ran the tank down. She is pretty dang low. I don't wanna go much lower and burn up my pumps. So. We're gonna fill up with E85, load the E70 tune, and then we'll cruise around for a little while. Here we go, E85 going in the tank. All right, so laptop is out. We just loaded up the E70 tune. We're just gonna do a casual cruise around and burn up this tank. Apparently 10 gallons gave me three quarters of a tank, so I guess we're gonna be driving for a while. All right, we're filling up with E85 again. We'll see what this tests when we get back. All right, so let's see what this batch of E85 tests. We're gonna let her settle, she's doing her thing. Now, I'll show you guys in just a minute. It only takes like maybe a few minutes and then you kind of get your results as you can see happening here right now. All right, results are in. Looks like pretty much the same as the other brand. So this was from Racetrack and the other one was Thornton's. Same thing, they both settled in around the E80 mark. Okay guys, so I wanted to tell you guys that this thing is fully switched over to E85. Most of the reason for this video was I wanted to take you guys through the steps of switching over to E85 because this is a new process for me. This is the first full E85 vehicle that I've done. And not only that, but I wanna point out that these Hellcats don't have flex fuel sensors. So that's the reason why we went with this whole practice, like I said, started off with the 93, and then when we kind of had a mix of 93 and E85, we loaded in an E70 tune. So once we ran that tank down, we fully filled up again with E85. 
that way we kind of flushed out whatever 93 was in there and had most e85 one thing i will say is very important you guys especially with these vehicles these hellcats that don't have flex fuel sensors this right here so having this to test it yes we could install an inline sensor so that we could have a reading on the dash which i probably will at some point but this is like 10 bucks i think off amazon so i'll link this down below but testing it is definitely essential as you saw most of the time we we're testing between e80 and e82 i want to try another station though my buddy usually tests around e95 or something like that so i'm going to try that out but um i am going to be going back to the track with this because right now with all the extra power we're able to turn it up and have a lot more timing in this thing so this thing is cooking so i don't have optimal traction right now to show you guys so right now this thing is just spin city so um, not a whole lot to film there. It's just a party on wheels right now with just the street wheels that we have So I wind up putting the drag pack back on it get to the track and this thing should be fast So i uh, pretty excited and then not only that, but we kind of overbuilt the fuel system So whenever we want all we have to do pretty much is just put an even smaller upper pulley on it right now It's a 285 so I can go down a lot of guys are running, uh, you know smaller than that and we can make even more power if we need to. So pretty excited for this one. Give it a thumbs up. Ask any questions down below. This is pretty much, like I said, the protocol to go through if you're going to do E85 on a Hellcat and you don't have a flex fuel sensor. You're going to be doing something similar to this with the data logging, going back and forth with your tuner, flushing out the fuel system, adding bigger injectors, more fuel pump, maybe a booster pump. But in our case, we went with dual Walbro pumps on this so that we have a lot of fuel and we went with colder plugs and that was the combo to get to where we are so if you guys found this helpful or informative give it a thumbs up check out the other videos on this channel for the full build on this truck as well as hellcat swap dakota hemi swapped second gen we got a bunch of stuff on here see you guys on the next one